In the top of the news this morning, Ronald Reagan, Walter Mondale, and an estimated 95 million other Americans are going to the polls today to exercise their right to vote. A new ABC News Washington Post poll shows President Reagan holding on to his substantial lead over Walter Mondale this morning. And this morning, the hijacking of a Saudi airliner in Tehran has ended with the passengers released, the hijackers arrested. From ABC News, this is World News This Morning for Tuesday, Election Day, November 6, 1984. It's 6.30 a.m. Now from our Washington News Desk, Steve Bell and Kathleen Sullivan. Good morning, everyone. Both presidential candidates are home now, waiting for voters to make their decision. President Reagan's voting today near his Santa Barbara ranch in California. Walter Mondale is casting his ballot in North Oaks, Minnesota. A final ABC News Washington Post poll shows President Reagan holding fast to that 54-40 lead, the same margin as yesterday's poll. As Mike Von Fremd reports, the president wound up his campaign yesterday where his political career started. The First Lady celebrated the end of the campaign by bowling in orange down the aisle of Air Force One. Today, the first family votes, watches election returns with friends, and after the polls close in California, hopes to declare victory. As he campaigned yesterday, the president's pollsters gave him some encouraging numbers. They told him that even by conservative estimates, his victory margin should be at least 10 points, and he should easily win 46 states. But publicly, the president continued to be cautious. I want to say... I'm terrified by the polls. Please don't read them anymore. Don't get complacent tomorrow. But by the end of the day, when he arrived in San Diego for the very last rally of the campaign, the president sounded a bit more optimistic. It's great to be in San Diego, my good luck city. The reason, the reason why the president said that is because he closed out his 1980 campaign at the exact same spot and celebrated the election results at this very hotel, where construction for a victory bash tonight is still now underway. But Ronald Reagan candidly admits he is superstitious, and so that's why he's ending his 1984 campaign in the exact same fashion as 1980, hoping for the same results. Steve? Mike, what about the coattail effect? Is the president going to be able to bring along the Congress? Well, Steve, in the House, they are counting on substantial coattails from President Reagan, winning back most of the 26 seats that were lost in 1982 and reestablishing that so-called ideological working majority. But in the Senate, it's pretty much a wash. They think that Republican Helms will win in North Carolina, that Percy's a toss-up in Illinois, and Jepson probably won't survive in Iowa. But for the president, there's now talk of capturing 57 to 61 percent of the vote. And if Mr. Reagan goes above 61 percent, he'll set a record exceeding that of Lyndon Johnson over Barry Goldwater 20 years ago today. Steve? Thank you very much, Mike. Kathleen? And now the challenger, Walter Mondale. Walter Mondale flew from California to Iowa to Minnesota on the final day of the presidential campaign. Throughout the day, Mondale made a final plea to voters to help him score the biggest upset in American history. This country belongs to you, and you're going to take it back. Give me your help. Let's make history. Let's build our future. Let's win this election. It's time for new leadership. It's time for America to move on. Thank you very, very much. Betsy Aaron, who's been covering the Mondale campaign for us, is joining us now live from Minneapolis this morning. Betsy, if Walter Mondale loses this campaign as all polls indicate that's a very good possibility this morning. How does he want his campaign to look in the history books? Kathleen, I think the most important thing to Walter Mondale is that he raised some issues. He wants to make sure that he moved this country in the direction that he feels is important. The two areas that uh, most interest him, arms control, social legislation. He got President Reagan to sit down with Andre Gromyko and on the social areas, he got the president to promise that he would not touch Social Security, and that's what a large segment of this population was worried about. So he has accomplished something. Steve? Thank you very much. Betsy Aaron in Minnesota. Geraldine Ferraro completed a four-state northern swing with a sentimental return to her alma mater in Manhattan. At Marymount College, Ferraro thanked her mother and family for their support, and she told the crowd that she's convinced she and Walter Mondale will win today. 
Vice President Bush wrapped up his campaign barnstorming across his adopted the state of Texas. In Houston, over. Bush urged Thank voters very, to very support much. President Reagan, not only by voting for him, but by also electing a Republican Congress to support the president's program. The returns already are in from Dixville, Notch, New Hampshire. Tradition again. Voters there have given President Reagan nearly unanimous support. As we said, it's a tradition for the voters in Knox, or Dixville Notch to cast their ballots at midnight. This time it was 29 for Mr. Reagan, just one for Walter Mondale. ABC News President Rune Arledge has announced that ABC News will not use exit polls to suggest winners in any state until the polls in that state have closed. ABC News will provide live coverage of the election, of course, beginning at 7 Eastern Time tonight with Peter Jennings and David Brinkley. CBS News coverage of campaign 84 election night continues. And now from CBS News election headquarters in New York, here again is Dan Rather. CBS News estimates that Ronald Reagan has been re-elected president. The question remains how big a mon uh, mandate is he likely to get? Welcome back to our election coverage. The polls have just closed in 16 states with a total of 195 electoral votes in these states alone. On the basis of the results in those states and on interviews with voters as they left the polling places, CBS News now estimates that Ronald Reagan has been re-elected president of our United States. Until this hour, it takes 270 electoral votes to win. Uh, Ronald Reagan already has, uh, as you saw on that, uh, we estimate about 280. Now, up until this hour, President Reagan had all the states in red that you see here, 136 electoral votes. This is at before we started counting these new votes in from the Midwest and from the South. This is how it looked before the polls closed in many states at this hour. Now, after the polls closed in the states at uh, 8 o'clock, the electoral count began to grow. And of the states reporting this hour, of the 16 more states, Ronald Reagan has won 12 of these new states, putting his electoral vote total over the top with 280. Walter Mondale at this hour won one, the District of Columbia. Mondale has yet to win a state, but as expected, uh, we estimate that he has carried the District of Columbia, which gives Mondale three electoral votes. This is the way the map looks now. Virtually all red, Ronald Reagan, 280 electoral votes, at least we estimate he has now. Walter Mondale gets three in the District of Columbia. It's still alive and working. Uh, the District of Columbia blinking up there in the right-hand corner of your screen. Since the district is so small, we have to put it on a little blink there uh, so you can see it. Uh, the, Ronald Reagan still has a chance, has a chance for an, an historic 50-state sweep. Let's look where his new electoral votes come from, if you will. First of all, in New Jersey, the Garden State with 16 electoral votes, where Geraldine Ferraro, it had been hoped by Walter Mondale, might, might make a difference. Not so. Ronald Reagan carries New Jersey. In Illinois, the Prairie State with 24 big electoral votes, Ronald Reagan has buried Walter Mondale in Illinois. In Michigan, the Wolverine State with 20 electoral votes. On the basis of our interviews with voters as they left the polls, our CBS News exit poll indicates Ronald Reagan has also carried Michigan. In Texas, 29 electoral votes in Texas, one of the mega electoral states uh, of the South and Southwest. Ronald Reagan rolls on to victory in Texas as well. In Connecticut, the Nutmeg State with eight electoral votes. It goes to Ronald Reagan, as does the state of Maine. Maine with four electoral votes is carried by Ronald Reagan as expected. Delaware, a state that has voted with the winner in the last eight straight electoral uh, uh, presidential elections, only three electoral votes in the first state. Delaware also drops into the Reagan column.